All right, everybody, welcome back to Conqueror and Commander. This is volume 93 of uh, my set of articles, and today we're going to be talking about a deck focused around Ruhan of the Fomori. Now, Ruhan kind of continues my streak of using commanders that are either not very popular or not very good, and uh, Ruhan is a guy who doesn't really do very well in multiplayer games. Because of his uh, ability, although he's a monster for his casting cost, uh, he lacks evasion and you don't get to choose who he attacks. One of the other problems with him is that he cannot attack planeswalkers, uh, which can be a problem sometimes. Um, Ruhan tends to be drawn to players who have death touch creatures out to defend so he dies because of that. He also be, tends to be drawn to players who have small little protection dudes that don't mind soaking up his damage. He just, you know, you never know where he's gonna go. You know he's always gonna attack, so uh, in order to make sure that uh, he actually gets his damage through, you've gotta do stuff like uh, put equipment on him and, um, you know, put some enchantments to make sure that he's unblockable. So that when he does get out there and last a couple turns, at least you're going to be smashing people to death. So I was kind of drawn to the whole smashy, smashy idea of Ruhan, and I decided to go ahead and give him a shot. Basically what I did was I put together a, a heavy white deck with a, a decent amount of equipment and some uh, enchantments to make sure that Ruhan can get through. Now ideally... The deck is also set up with some other, you know, significant threats so that I don't have to rely on Ruhan in case he does get tucked, which tends to happen, uh, or in case he's incapacitated for whatever reason. So I wanted to make sure that I can, you know, have decent guys to put all this equipment on anyways. Uh, as with any deck, um, what I like to start looking at first is the card draw. Uh, Pure Steel Paladin is sort of a, an iffy guy. Uh, there's, there's like uh, six or seven pieces of equipment. It's not really the, you know, best way to draw cards. But, you know, there are plenty of times when you have metal craft and being able to equip guys for no casting cost always works well. Uh, Sword of Fire and Ice, good equipment. You, you can draw and ping things. Wheel of Fortune is awesome because it's draw seven, time spiral, same thing. Slither Muse, you know, the, the deck has a pretty low overall uh, converted mana cost, and Slither Muse uh, helped when I managed to dump my hand, and there was always somebody out there with more cards in hand than I. Um, actually, let's take a look at the stats real quick here first. Yeah, so, I mean, the average, the average CMC of the deck is 3.29, which is pretty low for me, uh, but you can kind of see that the curve is really 3 heavy, and that's just the way it, it works. Sorry, guys, but I don't really have anything higher than 7, and, um, you know, it's obviously very heavy on the white. Uh, Luzun and Drug Skull Reaver are both... Uh, significant threats, especially when you get them equipped. Uh, Luzhen is actually just a variation on Thieving Magpie, but because he has horsemanship, it's really awesome to stick him with a nice piece of equipment, a sword specifically, and make sure that you, you can get him through. Um, Drog Skull Reaver, there is a little bit of life gain in here, so he's not entirely self-reliant for the card draw, but again, double strikers with some of this equipment is always awesome. Now, because we are playing uh, the colors of the Star Spangled Banner, uh, red, white, and blue, blue, we're obviously going to be behind to any deck that has green in terms of mana production. Those green decks love to play cards like Primeval Titan and Sky Shroud Claim and all that other stuff. So we have to at least make sure that we're, we can keep up. We're, we're never going to keep up, but at least we won't be too far behind. Knight of the White Orchid is for, has first strike, and he can grab a planes and put it in untapped. Uh, Weathered Wayfarer, it, you know, because we're going to be behind, we'll be able to grab whatever we want. Sword of Feast and Famine doesn't necessarily help us uh, accelerate, but it does give us the opportunity to cast spells in both our uh, first and second main phase. So that's why I like that one. Land Tax was a tricky one for me. I really wanted to, with my mana base, be able to consistently cast uh, Ruhan on, on turn four, just so that he could get out there and start wrecking shop. 
What that meant for me, though, was that I needed a significant amount of non-basics. Um, land tax, however, was just uh, something that I, I needed. I needed land tax, uh, specifically because I, I was always behind uh, in mana. So I managed to squeeze in 10 uh, basic lands in there. And, you know, honestly, like, people get so scared of land tax, I don't usually get to grab more than six lands from it. And that's usually all I need to make sure that I get going and I'm doing all right. So, um, I, I did have one game where I actually pulled out all my basics and I drew land tax, but, you know, it, it's worth it even in those situations. Other than that, we got regular stuff here. Uh, Expedition map helps us get our specialty lands, and Wayfarer's Bobble is, you know, uh, kind of like the only form of accelerate, the only other basic first turn or second turn form of acceleration that we can really play. So all these are really helpful. Um, now I've got a variety of tutors. Most of them tutor for artifact or equipment, not necessarily artifacts, and some of them uh, do other things as well. Uh, Stone Hero Giant, Stone Forge Mystic, Enlightened Tutor, all these are pretty basic. Imperial Recruiter, there's a lot of like two power dudes in here who are fairly powerful. Everything from Luzun to um, uh, Silver Blade Paladin to um, you know guys that uh, act as removal. There's a, a lot of little two power dudes in this deck and uh, having the Recruiter really helped. Thada Adel was awesome for stealing my opponent's uh, equipment or mana acceleration. So, uh, I mean, and she has Island Walk. There's a ton of people playing Islands, so stick some equipment on her and go to town. Godo, um, he's awesome, obviously. Sovereigns, there's only really three auras in the deck, uh, so I didn't, I didn't want to overload on auras, especially with all the equipment and some of the equipment giving me uh, protection abilities. So with Sovereigns, um, I just picked the three that I liked best. And those three are Drake Umbra, Battle Mastery, and Steel of the Godhead. Conspicuously absent is Eldrazi Conscription. Um, Conscription was a card that I had actually I, I tried in my first few, my first couple versions of the deck, and I found that I was often drawing it uh, in the first or second turn and it just sat in my hand as I was waiting for the game to develop for and for me to put it out there and then when I did actually end up playing it I kind of I didn't necessarily I didn't really like the um, the annihilator mechanic so what I did was I switched it out for Drake Umbra which was um, it was better in my eyes because uh, it granted evasion and it gave the totem ability I'm, I'm not going to lie, Eldrazi Conscription is probably a better card, but in terms of my mana issues, I felt like Drake Umbra was better for this deck. Feel free to get, disagree if you want. You can switch it out. Entirely up to you. Uh, here we got all our removal. Austere Command, always helpful. Return to Dust, Wrath of God. Soltari Visionary is awesome because he has Shadow, so you know that he's going to be able to hit. Uh, he's great against goofy decks like um, all those Bant decks that have a ton of enchantments and stuff like that, and occasionally gets through uh, against Xur. Stone Cloaker is one of my few graveyard hate cards. Orange Thunder and D Dismantling Blow are just awesome due to their kickers. Revoke Existence is a new card for me uh, that I've decided to play recently because there are artifacts and enchantments that do come back a lot, and it's just better to get rid of them. Very nice on stuff like War Warm Coil Engine. Other than that, we got our basics here. Um, the Hedge Mage uh, is nice. He's a nice little guy that I tutored for a lot with Imperial Recruiter. Uh, he's a two-for-one, and he just blows stuff up. It's awesome. I've only got three methods of recursion. Sun Titan, again, because of the low casting cost, uh, the low overall CMC of the deck, he has a lot of things that he likes to bring back because people do like to blow up your swords. Uh, Academy Ruin, same thing. Sword of Light and Shadow will get your creatures back. And I guess, in a way, Time Spiral, it's not necessarily recursion, but at least you can kind of like get all the stuff back into your deck. 
All of this is your combat related stuff. Um, Badger Skull, because it's one of those cards that I liked, especially for Ruhan, because it gives him vigilance, and it's always nice to be able to keep him back if necessary. Um, Tenza, I just liked making him bigger. I mean, it was a cheap, it's a cheaper version of the conscript, uh, Eldrazi Conscription. Battle Axe, giving him haste. Haste is important for uh, Ruhan as well as a variety of other cards on the deck, because a lot of the stuff that... Uh, a lot of these creatures basically rely on combat damage in order to get their effects, whether it's Soltari Visionary or Luzon or uh, Dog Skull Reaver. You want to make sure that you have some forms of haste, so Swift Foot Boots, um, Anger, stuff like that needs to. You want to make sure you have those cards. Um, Battle Mastery and Silver Blade Paladin are both give um, Ruhan Double Strike. I mean, Double Striking Seven Seven is just brutal. Um, Elspeth gives him flying and evasion. Sun Quan gets all your guys through. Sun Quan actually was awesome. I loved Sun Quan because uh, you don't have to worry about Ruhan getting blocked. Or any of your other guys for that matter. He's just awesome. Sun Fortress, uh, double strike again. Steal the Godhead, uh, unblockable on lifelink. Gisela, this is my first time playing with Gisela, and he just, or she just scares the crap out of people. I mean, she just. She's a game changer uh, in every every way possible. You know, you can draw tons of cards from Wheel of Fortune with Underworld, uh, Underworld Dreams out in play, and it won't hurt you at all. But everybody else gets hurt. It's great. Uh, Waves of Aggression is a card that I never actually cast. I really wanted to just for the ability to get that second uh, attack phase in. And it seemed good on paper. I'm not 100% sure if it really is a good card. I played the deck a lot, and just for some reason, uh, Waves of Aggression never came up. I don't know why. I've only really got three different counter spells here, and they're a little different. Um, Dawn Charm and en Envelop, not Envelope, Envelop, uh, are both just sort of fun little cards that were recommended to me a couple articles ago, so I decided to give them a shot. And both of them did really well, especially Envelop. Um, you know, somebody tried to cast Storm Herd for me right as I was about to win, and uh, to just create a ton of blockers because I was about to kill a guy with commander damage, and I had Envelop, and that that just sealed the deal. Um, Dawn Charm has a variety of um, possibilities. the 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 Fog one is actually the one that I used the most, but uh, being able to counter stuff that targets you is great. And then Mana Drain is just Mana Drain. It's good. Now, uh, one of the things that I wanted to consider when building the Ruhan deck was basically how am I going to be able to use a guy who attacks all the time on defense? And the easiest way to do that was either to give him uh, Vigilance or uh, to just have a bunch of defensive stuff up here. Oathsworn Giant, I liked him a lot. He he does he did really well for me and he costs a lot for what he does, but you know giving giving your guys like the the defense boost and giving them all vigilance is great. Masako the humor, humorless excuse me for that uh, is an awesome combat trick. Nobody ever expects it. Uh, she just I don't think people even realize she exists honestly because every time I played her people were like holy crap what's that and you know it. It was a blowout most of the time. She was great. Reconnaissance was another card that uh, was recommended to me recently. The trick with Reconnaissance is that you set a stop at your end of combat phase, uh, just after the combat damage is actually done, and then you remove your attacking creature from combat and untap it. So that way, if you're attacking with Ruhan, you can make sure that his damage gets dealt and then you can untap him. So it's like pseudo vigilance. It's awesome. Uh, if you're on the attack. <laughs> if you're on the defense, it does nothing. But, you know, I mean, it's a one mana enchantment. What what more do you need? Manamo untaps Ruhan if you want. Corehaven and Maze of Ith, um, defensive cards. Corehaven was a little annoying just because even though it gave me mana, I had to. I had to put mana into it in order to make it work, and that was just frustrating for me. I didn't like that very much. 
And then Slayer Strong Stronghold is another Vigilance Enabler, plus a Haste Enabler. I guess I could have put that in the other uh, other column over here. I don't know. And then finally we got some overall just like decent cards. Phyrexian Metamorph is, uh, you know, a commander killer. You can copy some equipment, you can copy a creature or whatever. Malignus uh, was awesome. I loved Malignus. He was just a big, fat beater. And, you know, you give him some sort of evasion, like a sword or something like that, and he just gets through and pounds the crap out of people. Sarah Ascendance, just good. Marion Crusader, a good with a sword. Double strike, two protection abilities. Baneslayer Angel was another lifelinker, uh, another big threat that uh, could scare the crap out of people. So, you know, the, there's a variety of, of ways to go about winning, but mostly it's just smashing stuff with Ruhan and destroying things that get get in your way. Um, you know, when 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 Ruhan's not on the table, people don't really tend to fear you because most of your guys aren't really that big. Unless you're playing unless you got the Bane Slayer or Malignus out or something like that, or you got Sun Titan going. Uh, most people kinda like turn the other way when he's gone, but as soon as he comes out, he's gonna have a big target on his head. And if he lasts for like more than four turns, he just wrecks people. He he's just he's just mean. I mean, that's what he does. He as you, you'll have him equipped with something, and you just go from there. Um, I had games where I was able to, uh, you know, he randomly hit somebody on like the fifth turn, and at the end of the game, it was me and one other guy. And you draw and play Sovereigns of Lost Alara. You give him flying with Drake Umbra, and then you win. And so that's kind of how it, a bunch of the wins ended up. Like, you, you would just kind of, like, randomly smash people, and then other people would knock each other out, and then you'd come in and just smash out of nowhere for the win. Either you drew the right sword, or you searched it up, or you you played Gisela and doubled his damage, or, you know, you would start attacking with Ruhan and Godo, and... So it wins with a variety of ways. Um, I think one of the weaknesses of the deck is that sometimes I felt like I didn't have enough card draw, and that kind of was combined with the fact that I felt like I got flooded a lot with land. Um, there are 37 lands in the deck. I guess you could cut one more land for um, another card draw card. Uh, I would I would avoid having it be something combat based because there's a lot of stuff that here that is combat based. So whether it's something like I don't know recurring insight, which costs a ton, I know, but uh, Ristic study actually could be pretty good. Ristic study is what I would probably add. But you know I I had really good success with this deck and I enjoyed it ton. I enjoyed it a lot, even if there were plenty of times when I was just looking at Ruhan and I was praying to God that he would attack with the right person. Sometimes he listens, most of the time he doesn't. So that's the deck. Um, before I, I go on to the next video, I just want to point out that I had the darndest times getting uh, videos for you guys because the replays were just sucking ass. It was killing me. But um, hopefully I'll get something for you. All right, thanks a ton, guys.